Just a quick video giving an overview of the data types that C uses, with links to other videos that give more details about some of those types. This chart summarizes the integer types that C has, showing the range of values each can hold, and constants from the limits.h include file that you can use with them. The integer types in C vary in two ways. The first way is that different types have different lengths, as measured in bytes. The unit byte is a measurement of how many binary digits something can hold. Every byte holds eight binary digits, or bits. The more bytes you have, the wider the range of values you can hold. The second way the types vary is whether they are signed or unsigned. If an integer is signed, that means that it can hold negative numbers. If you want to know more about how that's done, check out the video at the top of the screen. The smallest types of integers are based on the char type, which holds characters too. We'll talk about that in a couple of slides. For now, that is a type that can hold only a one byte integer. If you don't specify whether it's signed or not, what you get depends on the compiler you use. Some will default to signed and some to unsigned. If you're really using a char to hold small integers, be specific. However, that's a pretty rare thing to do. Memory is cheap, and conversions to the char type make your code kind of yucky. Uh, you usually really only see that in embedded systems. The type short is two bytes long and defaults to signed. It's just like a char, only bigger. After that, things get a little inconsistent. The size of int and long variables depends on your underlying architecture. The size of an int is the size of a word in the memory of your machine. It can be either 16 or 32 bits long. You can use the constant word bit from limits.h to tell you how many bits are in an int. The size of a long is always twice the size of an int. And then in C99, they added long long, which is guaranteed to be at least 64 bits long. For all of the integer types except char, you can put the word unsigned or signed before them to be specific about whether you want them to hold negative numbers. Except for char, they default to signed. Interestingly, if you use the type unsigned by itself, you get an unsigned int. Like integers, the types that hold real numbers vary in the number of bits that they hold. However, they are always signed. With more bits comes more range and more precision in your numbers. All of these types conform to IEEE 754 standard for storing real numbers. You can learn more about that in the video at the top of the screen. The last type I'm going to talk about is char. Yes, we saw this in the slide about integers. Characters, and everything else in the machine, are really stored as numbers. So we need a mapping for which integer represents which character. Basic C, without special libraries, uses ASCII as its mapping. You can see here how the characters map to integers. The uppercase characters are stored as the numbers from 65 to 90, lowercase characters are stored as 97 to 122, and the digits are stored as 48 to 47. Wait, that feels weird. Zero is stored as 48? Mm, you gotta be careful. The character zero, you know, that oval shape, is stored as 48. It's not the number zero. The cool thing about ASCII is that its power comes from the way groups of numbers are stored sequentially. That, and the fact that char is also an integer type, means that we can do math to manipulate them. For example, if I have a variable that's holding a capital letter, I can convert it to a lowercase letter by adding the difference between the uppercase group and the lowercase group. Since they're integers, we can use character variables in comparisons, and the groups make it easy to tell if a character is a digit. We can make similar comparisons for uppercase and lowercase letters. And those digits, we can convert the digit to the value it represents by subtracting the character zero, zero from them. For example, if the variable digit is holding the character three, you know, that curly shape, 
then the number that it actually holds is 51. If I subtract the character zero, which we already talked about is encoded as the number 48 from digit, I'll get the number three, which is the value that curly shaped character represented. If you'd like to learn more about ASCII and other ways computers store characters, check out the video above. There are other types like complex numbers that come with various libraries, but these are the basic types that C has to offer. Thanks for watching.